Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about, have a little conversation. I want to, I want to have a one-to-one, uh, -one, a little meeting of the minds with you. You are interested in hiring a nanny through the H2B program, probably, right? Because this is like video number five or so, maybe six in this series. And uh, you might not be ready. Are you ready to be an employer? Are you ready? Are you ready to be someone that can be audited by the US government as an employer participating in an officially sanctioned, regulated immigration program. Can you keep records? Can you pay people on time? Can you organize and manage a payroll service? Do you have your stuff together to participate in a program like this? Can you pay your nanny? These are all questions that you need to have an affirmative answer to uh, before you decide to do this program. So let's talk about what that means after the break. Hi, my name is Damien DeNoble and this is Frontier Tech Law. This is Law Great, our channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on the immigration journey you choose to take. Today we're talking about H2B visas. This is like part five or six or something of this H2B nanny video. And we've talked about what it takes to qualify for the program. Before that, I gave you an interview. We talked about what it means to have a dream nanny and what it means to be flexible in relation to your success in the program. We talked about what some red flags are to, to watch out for with your nanny. We talked about the pitfalls at each of the kind of three stops that you're gonna be taking on your journey with the Department of Labor, the US Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, and uh, possibly the Department of State consulate uh, that your nanny is going to apply through if she or he is applying from abroad. Well, the other thing we touched on briefly is this idea that, uh, you know, to, to qualify, you need to be ready to be an employer. But what does being ready mean? I mean, like, what kind of burdens are you going to have to undertake? Do you get to be a passive consumer of this nanny? Well, let me tell you right now, the biggest misconception I get from clients, and I haven't been really great about communicating this on some years, is that you do not get to be a passive participant in this program. It's not like you pay me or another agency and the nanny magically just shows up at your door. As an employer, you're gonna have to register with the IRS with an employment identification number. You're gonna have to register with your state with unemployment insurance authorities, with insurance authorities. You're gonna have to uh, uh, you know, apply with the state workforce agency and post formal job openings. You're gonna be at risk of audit once your nanny comes in. You're gonna have to take part in recruitment. That means fielding phone calls and emails. You're gonna have to pay your nanny on time or be subject to uh, you know, uh, liability, lawsuits from your nanny for either mistreating her or not paying her or, or what have you. You're gonna be subject to participating uh, according to all the rules of the program, which means reimbursing your nanny for travel expenses, uh, reimbursing your nanny for per diems once she's coming over here. All these things are not optional. You have to do it. I don't know how many times people call me and say, okay, okay, I get the prevailing wage and it says that I have to pay $16 an hour, but like, can I have a side deal with the nanny just to pay her less than that if I bring her over? The answer is like, no, you can't. This is not like a, 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 a play thing. You are going to formally be part of a very regulated program and you're going to have to be an active manager and participant in it. So you need to get your books in order. Number one, you make sure that this is a program you can afford. Your nanny's probably gonna be coming in this 2022 at anywhere from 13 to $18 an hour, depending on where you are. You're gonna be paying overtime wages in addition to that, if that's something that you offer. You're gonna be providing food and lodging. You're gonna to have to manage both a personal relationship with that person and a business relationship. And once they're here for a year and you have them on your year contract, let's say, you are obligated to finish out that year no matter like if 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 you really, if you get annoyed by them. Now there's reasons you can fire them and you can certainly put that in the contract as long as kind of they're in line with like the regulations of the program, but you are making a promise to a person you're bringing it over from abroad. So of course you're gonna have to, you know, fulfill that promise in a way that's less flighty than, than just hiring somebody from your own neighborhood. Okay, so you have to take these uh, things seriously. So. Can you pay them? Are you ready to take on the burden of, you know, having somebody's life in your hands even while they watch your children, right, in a sense? Are you ready to deal with state agencies, right? You can't be annoyed by small things like phone calls and emails. You're gonna have to do that. Even if you work with me, once you get through the program, get your nanny, I'm kind of out of the picture unless you get audited or something happens, then you can call me and I can help. 
but this is very much uh, an American program where once you dive in, you are responsible for reading the regulations and kind of understanding what you're in for. It's not very passive. It's not like uh, getting an au pair where the sponsorship organization takes care of the nanny's needs, signs off and everything needs to be done. You are essentially that sponsorship uh, organization because you're coming in as an employer. In general, then, um, if you are somebody who doesn't feel like they're organized, if you are somebody that skips on you know, their bills once in a while, if you are somebody that doesn't deal well with anxiety, if you're somebody that doesn't uh, deal well with uh, stressful situations uh, and dealing with other people, this might not be the program for you. This is very much a program that requires patience, skill, paying attention to regulations. And uh, therefore, it hasn't been the number one choice for nannies in the country for really really ever but now it's come to the forefront number one because i think i figured out how to do it pretty well and i've been kind of spreading this message for a few years now but number two because there's a child care shortage okay but it doesn't mean that this program is magic it just means it's an option okay and so you have to think about all of those things are you ready are you mature enough are you organized enough for this program can you pay for it are you ready to sponsor somebody who's going to be in the u.s because of you and he's going to have expectations to work and you're not going to be able to you know do your own thing you will have to do them according to the rigors of the program okay so that's something to keep in mind um, as you start on your nanny journey now we have an nanny ebook where i summarize all of this okay we've had lots of videos in the series here and another one here and another one here and another one here and here and uh you know go watch those subscribe i got one more video coming up uh in this and then that's it that's it that'll be the nanny videos uh for the for the uh 2022 2023 cycle i'm taking clients through november 10th that's kind of the last day i want to be filing prevailing wages you know we talked about the three cycle strategy in the previous videos we talked about how to find your magic nanny how to you know, talk about, uh, we talked about having flexibility with who you choose. We talked about what it takes to qualify. We even did a full overview. The last one in this is just going to be some closing thoughts and, and some kind of like uh, special issues that you want to consider when looking to hire friends or or, or, or family, right, from abroad and, and, and do's and don'ts. Okay. And I'll probably also cover in that video, um, California, which has some special uh, unique things going on in there. Okay. All right. Great. I'll see you in the next video.